Hi, I'm Miro. I'm a TNT champion. This is Rachel Ellering, the queen of Strong Smile. I'm Eric Bischoff. Live events, all right? When the WWE comes on the holiday tour, when they come to Ireland. Or Davey Boy without hair braids. As a fan, with braids, as a uh, dog <laughs> without braids. And you. And you are watching. Are watching Wrestle Slam. Wrestle Slam. And you're watching Wrestle Slam. Okay, guys, we're joined by X Division champion. Uh, look, this guy is incredible. We've been lucky enough to watch him on our screens for, for a long time now. Uh, Josh, first of all, how are you? It's been a crazy couple of months for all of us worldwide, but uh, how are you? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Nice no, to be it's on. An honor. It's an absolute honor. Um, so, X Division champion, Rebellion, uh, Triple Threat, you've done it in style. What was it like to, to finally being crowned X Division champion? Uh, it was a dream come true. Uh, I, as I've said many times before, Impact Wrestling TNA was like the the thing that made me think that be, me being a professional wrestler was possible. Seeing guys like amazing Red, Loki, Samoa Joe, all these guys that weren't Batista, you know, all these giants that uh, I had been used to seeing on television. So, uh, and then like from there, my fandom just grew watching the X Division and everything else. So now to be in the exhibition myself and you know having the exhibition championship it's just you know it's a sweet little milestone in my career that i can look back on and be proud of definitely and like speaking of the belt it's it's prestigious as you say the most incredible matches that we have seen in our lifetime are all exhibition championship matches and um, obviously you're going to have great honor defending this belt because look there's going to be a lot of heads that want that belt yeah yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have a target on my back at all times, which is why five guys are facing me at uh, Slammiversary in a few weeks in an Ultimate X match. But, uh, you know, it, it's fine. I, I said to Scott Tamora many times in promos, and I, I mean it. I want the best and co the best competition in the world. That's why uh, El Fantasmo from New Japan came over for a match. And, you know, hopefully some more people can come and I can defend this title even more because uh, by the time I'm all said and done with this, before I... Uh, I lose this championship. I want to be regarded as one of the best sex division champions of all time, up with Samoa Joe and AJ Styles and those guys. I love it. Now, speaking of Slammiversary, it's, it's a massive pay-per-view. You're obviously looking forward to that. Um, big stipulations in that match, but it's going to be a really good one. Yeah, I, I have a ton to lose, you know, with five other guys trying to take my championship and one of the most unpredictable matches ever created. But it's an Impact Wrestling exclusive. The Ultimate X match has been my favorite crazy match that I could have been booked in in my career. And, you know, it's another milestone for me to do as a, a professional wrestling fan and as a professional wrestler. So I'm really excited for it. Epic. Now, speaking of Forbidden Door, look, there's a lot of opportunities there at the moment. What's your take on Omega coming over to your ring and taking that World Heavyweight crown? Because, look, there's a lot of people happy, a lot of people not happy. What's your take on Omega? And maybe you should have thrown him and take that belt. Maybe after defending that belt as anniversary in style, you'll go after Omega if he still has that belt. Well, well, I'm not. I'm not happy about Omega taking the belt because I don't think he puts the respect on that belt that it needs. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of people talk about how the exhibition championship right now is the the sole championship in Impact Wrestling and all this other stuff. And I think, to me, I think the exhibition championship has been one of the most prestigious belts regardless of the heavyweight championship. But, uh, yeah, uh, Slammiversary, we'll see how it goes with Sammy and Omega. Uh, if Omega ends up having to retain, I certainly don't want to give up my exhibition championship. I want to be, like I said, I want to be regarded as one of the best exhibition champions of all time, and I don't think giving it up right away is going to be able to, you know, do that for me. I have a bunch of milestones I need to hit. And uh, if he wants to test me, I would, I would gladly welcome the match, especially in an Impact Wrestling ring. Josh, I think the double champ champ status suits you, my friend. I think, I think why not have all the glory? Why not just do it all? Why not just dominate Impact and just, you know what I mean? Be, be that mean son of a bitch that has all the belts and just say, you know what, everyone can jog on. I mean, it sounds really nice, but then, you know, I'd have even more people gunning after me. So I'd have a lot of work on my hands, but I guess I'm going to call myself the walking weapon. I should be prepared for this kind of thing. I agree. Now, I'm going to pass you to my co-host, Jer. He's got a couple of questions. I'll come back in towards the end. But Jer is a massive fan as well. Hey, Josh. How are you? Thank you. Hey, man. Good, good. Uh, you talked about milestones there. I just want to go to a milestone, the 60-minute Ironman match. Was that for you? First one, hopefully. 
Maybe I said. Uh, it was de- definitely a, <laughs> it wasn't my first. It was the first one that's was, ever happened in Impact Wrestling. Right. Uh, I, I've done a lot of uh, sixty minute matches in Canada on the Indies over the past few years. It was just something I wanted to do to test myself because I looked at guys like Brian Danielson and all these other guys, even like Ric Flair back in the day, doing the NWA title, you know, draws. I just wanted to test myself, and I don't think there's any better way to do it than to be stuck in there for 60 minutes because you can't tap out. There's no way out of there. You have to fill that time for 60 minutes. So if you're going to test yourself as a real professional wrestler, that's the way to do it. I was very proud to be able to say I've done it on television, which not you know only a handful of people can do right now. And I'm even more proud of how the match ended up turning out because I think uh, if you know people watch it, I think it's one of the most exceptional Ironman matches of all time. Yeah, the breakdown of it was phenomenal. Of just right up to the last second to get that final pinfall before going to overtime was how did you break? You know, did you plan that out? You know, on the day was that just on the fly, or did you have to run through it? Oh, you know, I thought we would have prepared a lot more, but uh, me and TJ kind of just relied on our chemistry, and uh, you know, that that kind of chemistry in the ring between two wrestlers doesn't come along very often. So we've just kind of been exploiting it as much as we possibly can. And in that Ironman match was the the craziest way to test it possible. Uh, everything came together really fast. I would say honestly, if you want me to give you like a percentage. 80% of that match was just out there. So <laughs> it, it, it was wild, and that's why I'm so proud of it. Brilliant. And, and Dilo mentioned a, a previous match you had with TJP it was probably one of the best he's ever seen, and he compared you to Kurt Angle at the time. How does that, how did that, you know, how does that make you feel when you compare to somebody like Kurt Angle? Uh, well, it makes me feel a little like crazy that these people are saying this because I idolize Kurt Angle. So yeah. I don't think anybody could ever fill his boots. You know what I'm saying? Uh, D'Lo saying that that's the third person that has said that to me. I've had Abyss, uh, a cameraman from Impact Wrestling and now D'Lo Brown just openly compare me to Kurt Angle. I, I, I think maybe it's the ankle lock, maybe it's the singlet. Hopefully to me, it's just the intensity because that's the one thing I take away from Kurt Angle when I watch him work. It's just that rabid intensity and that crazy work ethic. That's what I try to like, kind of, you know, push forward and move on and improve upon every time. Yeah. And Kurt's had some, some injuries in the past where he's come back from, and you've come back from a serious one as well with the back. So how is that now? You're, you seem to be a lot, a lot better now. You're not, you're not scared to take a few bumps. Yeah. My, my neck's been fine. My, my neck's been fine for, you know, it's been five or six years now since I came back. And uh, I, I've always told people if, if anything's going to go on me, it's going to be any part of my body except my neck now, because I do so much work on it every single day to make sure that it's never something I have to worry about because it's certainly not, nothing I ever want to experience again. Absolutely. Perfect. Jar- Love it. Now, Josh, we have to speak of the history of Canadian wrestlers. It's obviously a fine tradition that we've seen perhaps the greatest of the greatest. Now, I'm easily putting you in that category, but how proud of you to, to see how like, you know, Canada is so huge when it comes to wrestlers. How proud are you of Canada and, and the wrestlers that can produce? I'm super proud to be a Canadian wrestler. Like, that's why I wear the maple leaf on my singlet. That's why, as you see behind me, I have like branding, all Canadian. Uh, just because I'm, I'm proud of the lineage of Canadian wrestlers. And the only thing that I found in recent years, especially, is that there's not a lot of eyes in the Canadian scene. So, like, it's been my, like, goal, especially with Impact Wrestling, allowing you to do independence, is to try to grow the scene, much like the UK scene boomed in the past, like, five years on the heels of the likes of Zack Sabre Jr., Will Ospreay, Pete Dunne, all those guys. I would like to try to give back to the Canadian scene and grow it even more because, if you look at the lineage, you're talking like Dynamite Kid, Bret Hart, Owen Hart, all the way to Christian Edge, Kevin Steen, Sami Zayn, now Ethan Page, Josh Alexander, uh, can't leave out Gail Kim, Trish Stratus, Taylor Wilde. You're, you're talking about some exceptional talents when you're talking about in-ring and everything else. So uh, I think there's a lot of talent up here. I just don't think there's enough eyes on it. So if I can, you know, kind of help that, then, you know, that's, that's all I can say that uh, I want to do at least. I love it. Now, we have to speak of impact. Impact is huge. It's trending every week. It's, it's ratings are massive. It's really, to me, the number one organization in the world right now for, for you know, amazing storylines, great matches. The fans are sticking with it. They love it. How proud are you of Impact and, and how far it's come these past you know, couple of months and years? 
Uh, I'm a huge Impact Wrestling fan, first and foremost, ever since the first Wednesday night pay-per-view on. Like I've said, I, I've followed it the entire time. Uh, I'm very proud to be a part of the Impact Wrestling roster. I, I couldn't be happier to be a part of this company. I feel like it was about three, three and a half years ago now, they kind of changed their game plan and they started long-term planning which is now starting to pay off tenfold because they put together this roster of like what I call killers. Like our knockouts roster is insane. Uh, the tag division is insane. Uh, the X division, like look at all these guys that are in the, the ultimate X with me right now. And you're not even talking about everybody that's in the X division. I, I think we're all people that can, you know, go out there and deliver when needed to. And uh, we're all exceptional at our jobs. And I think that the, it's just a testament to Impact Wrestling that we built this roster. And now it's a sought after free agent destination for other people like Good Brothers and Deanna Parazzo and all these other people. Oh, it's huge. Speaking of rosters, it's always a question I like to ask. Uh, there's a lot of free agents out there at the moment, a lot of really good free agents. Um, you know what I mean? Would it be nice to perhaps see one or two more come into Impact and, you know, give yourself a challenge, give the roster a good challenge? Yeah, I, I think as many good people as we can get in this locker room, the better. I, I, I'm not one of those people that would ever be like, oh, that guy might take my spot. I don't want him here. Hey, if that guy comes in and that guy wants to take my spot, then have at her. It's up to me to make sure you don't. So uh, the more competition we have, I think the better competition is what I think, uh, you know, makes everything better. I think it, it, it makes the whole product better. So the more people that we can get to come in, the better. Last of all, we have to ask all the European fans. We are absolutely dying for Impact to come to Ireland, the UK. Um, obviously, it's something you look forward to, and hopefully it does happen in the near future. It'd be great to see it happen, won't it? I would love to come out to the UK for an Impact tour. I, uh, I had no idea the type of fan base that there was in Europe for Impact Wrestling until I signed here. And from the moment I've signed here, I've had fans from all over Europe. Uh, just supporting me and buying my merch and doing all this stuff. So if I can come perform for them live, that would be my way to give back. We love it. Josh, it's an absolute honor as always, my man. It's, uh, you know, we love watching you wrestle. Um, all the best of Sam anniversary. Please take Omega's head off as well. That would be something that we'd like to see. Um, we love you from Europe. Thank you very much and have a great day.